Doctors in Stockton get access to free and crucial health services for all of those furry friends that we're trying to take care of. It's a part of a clinic that's being held this morning and Dr. Jennifer Scarlett from the San Francisco SPCA joins us live this morning to talk more about this mobile vaccine clinic coming to Stockton. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, how are you? Great, tell us more about the free services being offered for the community today. Yeah, yesterday we were working at the Stockton Animal Shelter doing free spays and neuters for dogs and cats. And today we're setting up here at the San Joaquin Fairgrounds to provide vaccines for dogs only, the distemper parvo DHPP vaccine, as well as rabies. And we're also setting up a, a microchipping tent. So um, we'll be here from eight to 12 today. And tell me a little bit more about the importance of holding events like this for the community. Yeah, so we know that many, many dog owners are having difficulty ac accessing veterinary care, either due to the cost or the severe shortage of veterinarians. And these are core vaccines that keep animals healthy. So this is a, a huge benefit to the community, keeping parvo and distemper, especially out of the young dog population. And of course, the spay neuter to keep animals out of the shelter. Absolutely, and you're from San Francisco, but what brings you to Stockton today? We've worked with uh, Stockton City and the Stockton Animal Shelter since 2011, and we have um, decided to try to extend our services to areas that are most in need. So this is a long time partnership and we're looking forward to many more of these clinics in the future. Absolutely, and how can people access these services today? Yeah, so today we are, again, we're at the San Joaquin Fairgrounds. Uh, we'll be here from eight until 12, so you can just come in. If you've signed up, many of over about 600 people have signed up already. We are ready to service a thousand uh, vaccines today. So if you have not signed up, you can just get in line here at the fairgrounds and we'll just keep working until we finish everybody up today. And what would you say to people who say, well, maybe I'll just put this off for a little later date? Well, if, especially if you have a young dog, I would not do that. We know that distemper and parvo are very infectious diseases and, and those are the most vulnerable populations. So if there's any way you can get out today and you have a young dog, please take advantage of this. Terrific. Dr. Jennifer Scarlett, thank you for all you do for our community. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Turning now to our Commitment 2024 coverage, Democrats are holding their first official primary in South Carolina. Even though President Biden is expected to win big, the drop in enthusiasm could mean trouble for his campaign. According to experts, both Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have made several trips to the state in recent weeks, trying to rally a critical base of young black voters. Polls close around 4 p.m. our time today. President Biden will be back in Southern California this weekend. He is set to arrive at LAX later this afternoon. As a part of his trip, he's also expected to visit Las Vegas ahead of Nevada's Democratic presidential primary Tuesday. It's a short visit. The president is scheduled to return to Washington, D.C. Sunday afternoon. Ahead of California's March primary, you can get an inside look at the elections process in Sacramento County. The elections office is opening its doors for people to take a tour to see exactly what they do. Part of the tour is a look inside the uh, tabulation room. So uh, people will get to look in through um, a window to see the ballots going through the tabulators. And um, it's just an overall cool experience. And the tours are Wednesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. You can sign up at elections.saccounty.gov. Video here from Iraq claiming to show the aftermath of the U.S. military strikes in the region. It's in response to a drone attack that killed three American troops in Jordan last week. And KCA3 Executive Yusko joins us from our Washington newsroom with more on what the White House is saying. Jackie. So President Biden said in a statement, if you harm an American, we will respond. And he says that this is just the beginning of that response. The Defense Department announced on Friday that U.S. military forces struck more than 85 targets in Iraq and Syria. The Pentagon says those facilities were used by Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and affiliated militias to attack U.S. forces. Hours before Friday's air assault, Biden joined grieving families as the remains of three American service members killed in a drone strike in Jordan last Sunday will return to U.S. soil. A reminder of the stakes here as Iran denies involvement in that deadly attack last weekend and threatens to retaliate.
It appears that this round of U.S. strikes stopped short of directly targeting Iran. As for next steps, the Biden administration is not sharing specifics at this point while emphasizing they're not looking for further conflict in the Middle East. In Washington, I'm Jackie DeFusco, KCRA 3 News. Jackie, thank you. Biden administration officials say the strikes hit various military targets that were selected to avoid hitting civilians. Right now, it's unclear how many militants were killed. Time right now is 740 filing for free. The volunteers helping people with their taxes in Sacramento County this morning. The toll to cross the Golden Gate Bridge could increase to more than $11 for fast track users. The Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transportation District oversees the bridge, bus and ferry transit from the North Bay to San Francisco. It is considering four increases to narrow a steep budget gap. One option would include 50 cent increases each year, going up to $11.25 by 2028 to cross the bridge. Invoice drivers would pay $12.25 a vehicle. Car traffic on the bridge is at about 85% of 2019 levels, losing the agency $30 million of revenue each year. With tax season well underway, low-income residents in Sacramento County can get their filing done for free today. United Way is holding a free tax preparation event inside what they're calling a mobile tax bus. IRS certified volunteers will help residents file their taxes. There will also be resources available to apply for tax credits. This event is for households that earned less than $66,000 last year. The United Way tax bus will be near the offices of Old Placerville Road, and this is close to Mather Airport. It runs from 9 in the morning until 1230 today if you qualify. The 66th Grammy Awards will be handed out tomorrow, and one artist leads all of the others in nominations. Rick Domagella has more. 
SZA has the honor of receiving the most nominations for the 2024 Grammy Awards. The St. Louis-born singer-songwriter has nine nominations, including three of the big four categories, Record, Song, and Album of the Year. SZA's Kill Bill is nominated for both Song of the Year and Record of the Year. The track is from her sophomore album, S.O.S., which is nominated for Album of the Year. SZA now has 24 career Grammy nominations and one win. SZA is one of six artists nominated for Record of the Year and Song of the Year. The others are Miley Cyrus for Flowers, Billie Eilish for What Was I Made For from the Barbie soundtrack, Olivia Rodrigo for Vampire, and Taylor Swift for Antihero. John Batiste rounds out the double nominees, scoring a Record of the Year nod for Worship and a Song of the Year nomination for Butterfly. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And meanwhile, a little bit of Hollywood is in the capital city this morning. Live Copter 3 flying over the Sacramento rail yards when we noticed multiple trucks and trailers parked alongside the street. They appear to be movie trailers and trucks. The area is blocked off and under 24 hour security. Warner Brothers has permits to film in Sacramento. The permits are for the downtown area, but the city is not releasing any details just yet. So mom's the word right now. Turning to case rate three weather, let's take a live look over West Sacramento from our Sutter Health Park sky camera. Kind of cloud, cloudy right now. Let's go now to Heather to see how this day is going to shape up for us. Yeah, Leticia, today is the quiet day. Sunday is the stormy day, and things are really going to develop very quickly ahead of sunrise tomorrow morning. We're thinking that the timing of all of this shifting earlier and earlier. So I want to show you kind of the pieces that are coming together here. We have an area of low pressure off to our north. Think of that as kind of the energy. Another area of low pressure developing well off to our south and west. This also has some energy with it, but this is what's bringing all of the moisture. That's going to result in the heavy rain and eventually the heavy snowfall as well. And as these two areas of low pressure kind of combine together, that's where we see that wind threat really starting to pick up. So tomorrow again, a weather alert day for the heavy rain. The wind gusts potentially over 50 miles per hour and that potential for heavy Sierra snow as well. Tomorrow a day we're really encouraging people if you don't have to be traveling, whether it's the valley, the foothills, or especially the Sierra, tomorrow's a good day to stay home. Today is a great day to get your errands done, make sure the yard is cleaned up, make sure everything is ready ahead of the system as it starts to move in. Because again, first thing tomorrow morning, some will already be experiencing some of that strong wind and already some of that heavy rainfall as well. So this is six o'clock on Sunday morning. Notice Stockton, Modesto already seeing the wind gusts 35 to 45 miles per hour. We're also going to be focusing in on the foothills, especially to the south of Highway 50 first thing in the morning. Look at this boundary that sets up here too. notice the strong south wind through the San Joaquin Valley, but for Sacramento and areas to the north, it's more of that north breeze and it takes a little bit for that wind to really pick up in Sacramento. So if you wake up first thing tomorrow morning and you think, wait a minute, where's the wind? You give it until about midday into the early afternoon. Sacramento still could see wind gusts between 40 and 50 miles per hour, but winds of that strength a lot more persistent off to the south. As we go through the afternoon into the evening, yeah, these winds reach northward into Marysville, Rockland, west side of the Sacramento Valley, and especially into, say, Davis, not necessarily worried about the winds quite so much. It's really the foothills, the east side of the valley for at least several hours during the day on Sunday. That's where we see the potential for those power outages, uh, some issues with tree limbs, and some issues with potentially some down trees as well. Rain certainly a factor here, too, and this will be a good soaking rain for most of the day on Sunday. A lot of spots in the valley, anywhere from an inch and a half to up to two inches of rain possible. That is certainly enough to cause some street flooding. It may cause some of the smaller creeks to rise just a bit. We are not expecting big flooding issues with any of those creeks or certainly not with any of the rivers up into the foothills, looking at anywhere from two to potentially three inches of rain. And then once you get up over 6,000 feet in the Sierra, that's where we're talking about the heavy snow potential. But I want to show you the river forecast for the Cosumnes River.
remember uh, you remember last January. This is where we had the big flooding issues. Uh, but again, this time around, it's expected to crest midday on Monday, cresting at what we call monitor stage. So the river level will come up at Michigan Bar. Again, this is the Kasumnus, but it's not going to flow outside of its banks. It's likely not going to cause any of those flooding issues that we saw last year. So again, Sunday, the alert day Monday, we will see some leftover rain. The wind will be a lot lighter at this point, but there likely will still be some impacts for the Monday morning commute. So Leticia, today, the quiet day, it's a good day to get ready. Sunday is the alert day. Things kind of winding down Monday into Tuesday. Sure. All right, we'll be ready. Yep. All right, thanks so much. Calling all young artists. Cal Fire is encouraging kids to creatively share their love and knowledge of trees in a piece of art. This year's theme is I love trees because Cal Fire wants students to think of all of the ways trees improve our lives and trees are due in 10 days. So get to drawing. Winders will receive cash prizes and their art will be shared by Cal Fire during Arbor Week that is coming up March 7th through the 14th. Time right now is 750. Get ready to head to Las Vegas just over a week away until the 49ers take the field for another shot at a championship, how the team has been preparing. Just over a week away from the big kickoff of Super Bowl 58 and the San Francisco 49ers are hard at work getting ready for the big game. Case Ray 3's Michelle Dapper was in Santa Clara with the team to show us how they're preparing for NFL's biggest stage. I all understand, you know, the the stage that this game is going to be played on and and, you know, you don't want you don't want to get to Vegas and with all the stuff going on. Uh, let all that other stuff on the outside get in the way. It might turn up a little bit the first day or two out right there, but um, after that, really just lock in, you know what I'm saying, focus. The whole week is really like a movie. Like, you're going to see celebrities everywhere. Pre-game on the field, you might see Jay-Z, Beyonce, you know what I'm saying, Kevin Hart, people like that. But, I mean, it's still a game at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying. We still got, still got to go out there and try to get the win. We've gotten close a couple times, but... You know, hey, the ball bounces other people's ways and some plays weren't made and that's just football. And 
um, it's very nice to be able to say that we got over that NFC Championship hump and have another opportunity finally. Somewhat of a circus once we get there um, with the media and all that stuff and having to go through the fanfare of that process the early part of the week. Uh, I don't really consider it to be a celebration uh, until after we win. Uh, and, I, and we'll get our guys locked back in on Wednesday as we approach and get ready for practice. One player missing from the practice field this week, tight end George Kittle. I would say taking a page out of my hockey friends playbook, I would say it's a lower extremity injury. That's about all I'll say about it. Kittle says he's not concerned with the injury. As for quarterback Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, prepping for his first Super Bowl. But he also responded to the comments made by CEO Jed York, telling reporters Kyle Shanahan knew he was the best QB on the roster back in 2022. Honestly, I didn't really know ever. <laughs> like, I was going through the preseason games. He wasn't really saying much. Um, obviously, he was trying to develop Trey as best he could and all that. And, we were all, you know, being there for Trey and helping Trey out. Um, and then when the season sort of came around and I found out I made the team, I was like, oh, okay, like, I think he, you know, respects the way I play and how I handle things. So again, the Niners depart the Bay Area on Sunday and they kick off Super Bowl 58 the following week. In Santa Clara, Michelle Dapper, KCRA 3 News. Lots of excitement in the air and our crews will also arrive in Vegas on Sunday. We'll bring you our live coverage all week long, including live shows every night starting Monday. Stick with us as the 49ers set out on their quest for a sixth Super Bowl championship. Let's take a look at the Golden One Center right now. The beam was lit again last night after a nice win on the road for the Kings. The team won 133 to 122 against the Indiana Pacers. The Kings will be in Chicago tonight to take on the Bulls. Tip off is at five. Some of the best pro golfers in the world will again tee off at the AT&T Pebble Beach Golf Tournament. Round three starts later today in Monterey County, and right now there's a three-way tie for the lead. The pros have been dealing with some wet conditions out there throughout the competition so far, but there could be some relief today. Time right now is 7.56. We continue to track the storm approaching our region. Some homes could lose power with the expected strong winds how utility companies have been preparing and what they want customers to know. And asking for help, the need for donations to help people staying at weather shelters in Sacramento County. But first, let's take a live look over the capital city. We are back with more news and weather at eight o'clock. Stay with us.
where the news comes first. This is KCRA 3 Morning News. A strong storm set to bring rain, snow and wind. Utility companies are preparing for possible power outages. Storm shelters are seeing a big demand. How you can help those in need. And it's the first primary for Democrats voters in South Carolina heading to the polls. We want to start with a live look at Sacramento and Stockton this morning. It may be dry right now, but this is really going to change for tomorrow morning. Good morning, I'm Leticia Ordaz. Tomorrow is a weather alert day and we expect to see some heavy rain and snow, but the wind is also a big concern. Let's send it over to Adam Real. Does Heather Waldman tracking our forecast? Yeah, Leticia, unfortunately, our confidence is increasing that there will be some areas that see an extended period of time where wind gusts of 50 miles per hour or higher are possible. When wind gusts reach that speed, we see an increased risk for power outages, down trees, and of course, debris. So anything that's out in your yard Today is a great day to make sure everything is cleaned up and everything is brought inside. The focus for the wind, especially tomorrow morning, will be to the south of Sacramento and into the foothills. I want to show you how this evolves. Nine o'clock this evening, yeah, there's not much wind to talk about, but overnight we start to develop that stronger offshore flow through the delta. And notice it starts to get breezy from Modesto up to San Andreas, Stockton as well. Wind gusts between 35 and 45 miles per hour. That's six o'clock Sunday morning. You'll notice the breeze around Sacramento, but it's not going to cause any issues just yet. The entire morning windy through the San Joaquin Valley into the foothills south of Highway 50. Once we get into the afternoon, we see a greater potential for these winds to shift northward into Sacramento and eventually to the foothills along into the north of Interstate 80. Not a big wind concern on the west side of the Sacramento Valley, but again, this extended period of these strong winds lasting most of the day south of Sacramento, that's where we see that big risk for that uh, outage potential. Leticia, back to you. Thank you so much, Heather. And with the expected win, utility companies in our area say they're going to be monitoring the situation for potential power outages in KCRA 3s. Aaron Heft is live in El Dorado County this morning. And Aaron, how are people there preparing? People are really preparing themselves for power outages specifically, whether they're expecting rain or wind or snow. People here in the hills and in the mountains, they really do know how to prepare themselves for systems like this, and they are ahead of tomorrow and into Monday. So KCRA, we actually went by and stopped into hardware stores, specifically in the Pollock Pines area, to see what people are doing. And we saw people buying tarps and snow shovels, pellets, and more. They're making sure they have everything they need ahead of Sunday's storm. pg &E actually told us they're expecting some outages with the main areas of concern being where I stand right now, the foothill communities, as well as the Sierra, as well as parts of Sacramento and San Joaquin County. Living up here, you always want to have like a generator going because chances are power is probably going to come out. So power goes off. You want your generator. We're getting a tarp and this kind of normal stuff you need. If necessary, we'll, we will bring in crews from other areas to help local crews in the most impacted areas. That way we can get power back on more quickly. PG&E saying they're keeping a very close eye on the forecast, not just today, but into tomorrow and Monday, so they can best predict the areas that are going to be hardest hit. Leticia. Thank you so much, Erin. Again, this storm will bring heavy rain and heavy snow, and that's going to lead to some issues on the road for drivers. We want to let you know that Discovery Park in Sacramento County is closed because of expected flooding, and these are exclusive images from Livecopter 3, and park staff anticipate the Sacramento River levels to rise, flooding the park, which it is designed to do. Let's send it back to Heather Waldman tracking the situation for tomorrow. Heather. Yeah, and Leticia, the river level's already coming up for the Lower American because releases are being made ahead of the rain that's coming in. We are not expecting widespread flooding issues on the American River, as Leticia just said. Discovery Park designed as a floodplain to do just that. We will likely see some areas of street flooding Sunday afternoon, especially in in some areas lasting into early Monday, depending on just how much water we see, most creeks should be OK. The water levels in some of our smaller creeks like Dry Creek and Deer Creek, they may come up a bit and we may have some standing water around some of those banks. But again, river levels should be just fine this time around. But we want to emphasize that Sunday's going to be a soggy day pretty much from start to finish for the foothills, the valley, and we got heavy snow up into the Sierra as well. Ahead of sunrise, rain already ongoing. So the morning drive, yeah, it's going to be tough if you have anything to 
to do outside tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's really a day to kind of rethink it. Today is your day to get things done. Even by tomorrow afternoon, rain becomes a little bit more hit or miss, but any of these showers that come through could produce some brief heavy downpours. And notice that snow, once it starts before sunrise tomorrow, Leticia, it lasts all day long. We'll talk more about potential totals with that snow and the rain in just a bit. Heather, thank you so much. This incoming storm will leave an impact throughout the state. California emergency management officials will update their media on the response so far that they're expecting for tomorrow. We're going to let you know what they have to say later today, both on air and online starting at 5 p.m. Weather shelters in our area have been reaching capacity. Now Sacramento County is asking for donations to meet the big demand. k 3s Carolina Estrada visited a weather respite center and shows us how we can all help. On cold and rainy days, weather respite centers in Sacramento County are a place for unhoused residents like Keith Davis to stay warm. Basically when you know the weather is bad, it's somewhere nice to come, cool, warm. This is Davis' second time staying at the Warren E. Thornton Youth Center gym this winter. They give you a bed and you know, they feed you three times a day. This center off Branch Center Road has a capacity for up to 50 adults. It's a 24 hour operation, which is something different than we've done in the past. People can stay the whole time. Haynes says it has reached capacity every time it opens. We have sweatshirts, we have a bunch of different women's clothes. Now they're asking the community for help to meet the demand. A lot of times when people come into weather respite, their clothes are soaking wet, um, they don't have a coat, they don't have shoes. Among the items they need are men and women's jackets, sweatpants, underwear, towels, and hygiene products. Gently used items are okay, so if you have stuff at home you're not using. Any donations can be dropped off at the Warren E. Thornton Youth Center gym between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. As for Davis, he only has one message for unhoused residents in the county. Don't be afraid to come here, like come here to help you out. Like, you know, you don't, if, if it's cold outside and it's raining and it's somewhere to go, you know, you should go there. In Sacramento County, Carolina Estrada, KCRA 3 News. And you can follow the storm with the free k 3 app. There you're going to find interactive radar to track the weather in your neighborhood and get hour by hour forecasts. Be sure to turn on alerts on your phone for any breaking updates. Turning to our commitment coverage now, South Carolina voters are heading to the polls for the Democratic primary. It is the party's first official contest of the presidential race. Meanwhile, Republicans in South Carolina will hold their primary a few weeks from now. And KCRA 3's Jackie DeFusco is in our Washington newsroom with a preview. Yeah, President Joe Biden is expected to deliver a decisive win against his Democratic challengers, Congressman Dean Phillips and author Marion Williamson. But South Carolina is also an important testing ground for a key demographic. For the first time, the Democratic primary is kicking off in South Carolina. South Carolina, you are the first primary in the nation. And President Biden and I are counting on you. Vice President Kamala Harris campaigned at a historically black college on the eve of the leadoff contest for the Democratic presidential nomination. The earlier date intended to elevate a more diverse group of voters. What had traditionally been the first two states, Iowa and New Hampshire, really were not reflective of the base Democratic electorate. Back in 2020, black voters helped deliver then-candidate Joe Biden a big win in South Carolina that revived his presidential campaign. You're the reason I am president. This time around, signs that support could be slipping. Just 50% of black adults said they approve of President Biden in a recent national poll, compared to 86% in July of 2021. I think that the concern for the lack of enthusiasm among black voters is a legitimate one that the Biden campaign has to face. Meanwhile, Republican presidential candidates are working to shore up support ahead of South Carolina's GOP primary later this month. We have done it in South Carolina before. We can do it in South Carolina again. Even in her home state, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley lags behind former President Donald Trump by 26 points, according to a new poll. And just a little note to Nikki. She's not going to win. Now, South Carolina has an open primary system, which means that any registered voter is allowed to cast a ballot in either tonight's Democratic primary or the Republican contest set for February 24th. 
In Washington, I'm Jackie DeFusco. Jackie, thank you. In other news, right now, hundreds of athletes are racing to secure their spot for Paris in the Olympic marathon trials. Three women and three men will make the team. There are 370 runners competing in Orlando right now. At least six of them are from the Sacramento area, hoping to become a part of Team USA for the Summer Olympics. It's a monumental achievement to even make it to the trial in Orlando, and we spoke with the Sacramento Running Association about the honor for the Sacramento runners. Not many people can say that they trained and qualified for the Olympic trials. So it's very special to see all these folks from Sacramento uh, competing out there in the marathon trials. If you miss the beginning, the race airs right here on KTV3 at 9 o'clock. Stay with us throughout the hour for big updates. Time right now is 810, taking on fentanyl, the Washington representative who wants to stop the flow of drugs throughout California. And a high rise targeted by taggers, the building in Los Angeles that's getting some national attention right now. But first, let's take a live look outside. Look at the cloud cover going away for today. This is a live look at beautiful Lake Tahoe. We'll be right back with more news and your forecast. Federal leaders want to help local and regional efforts in California to stop the flow of illegal drugs. Congressman John Duarte unveiled his proposal in Modesto. While being surrounded by law enforcement and community members, he wants Congress to reauthorize a high-intensity drug trafficking area program. The bill in part would provide more than $300 million a year to law enforcement across the country to go after high-level drug dealers. The bill is backed by both Republicans and Democrats, which gives Duarte hope it will actually pass the House. We're getting scheduled for time in February. That's what we're being told by the Speaker's office. That's very exciting. It's a very scarce resource in, in D.C. right now is actually having floor time. Having a bipartisan group on the bill is not only going to help the bill pass, but then the money needs to be authorized and it needs to be appropriated. And getting through the budget resolutions over the next um, 
few months is going to be very, very important. We think we're going to be able to keep this in. The bill is also has requirements to ramp up communication between law enforcement and immigration authorities. Three men have been arrested in connection to a deadly shooting last year in Stockton. In November, officers say they responded to calls of a fight and gunfire near Cherokee Road and Robindale Avenue. When they got to the scene, they found a car had been involved in a crash and two people were injured. One of them was shot several times and later died. This week, deputies made three arrests in this case. One of the suspects faces murder charges, while the other two have been charged for being accessories. Not everything that glitters is gold. That is the warning from the Backville police this morning. The department has received a number of calls about scammers trying to sell fake gold items. They say it starts with a stranger approaching the victim. That stranger then says they need money for their wife and kids in the car. That person then tries to sell the victim a gold ring pendant or even a watch for a low price. But watch out because the gold is fake. If you're approached by a scammer, walk away. Now to a site that's been capturing national attention. At least 27 floors of a luxury high rise have been vandalized in Los Angeles and the building is right across the street from the red carpet of the Grammy Awards and Jeff Wynn has more on the effort to remove the graffiti. Just outside Crypto.com Arena, Shutterbugs snapping pictures of LA's newest attraction, graffiti spray painted on this abandoned high rise. James Vance DG owns the coffee shop across the street. So the building's been kind of an eyesore now, it's just like put an exclamation point on it. On Thursday evening, a drone captured a number of people at what's called the Oceanwide Plaza. This after the LAPD arrested two men for trespassing two days earlier. Neighbors say people have been breaking in because there's not enough security. Do you know the people behind the graffiti? I want to say respectfully I do. Ronick is a podcaster who focuses on graffiti culture. He wouldn't tell us who's tagging the building, but he says it's a giant canvas for artists who want their work to be seen. The higher you get is the better because if one is more visible, two, it'll last longer, and three, it'll be harder for someone to come and paint over. Construction here stopped in 2019 because the development project ran out of money. LA City Councilman Kevin DeLeon introduced a motion Friday to instruct the owner of the property to restore things to their original state or make improvements. But the developer is based in China. In the long term, not just securing and cleaning up the blight, but we need someone to actually buy the property outright. De Leon says the cost to finish the project would be well over a billion dollars. As long as they're just going to continue to sit there, I don't have a problem with the, with the art. I think it adds some color. It looks good. Uh, it looks a lot better than just a, a giant, you know, scale of gray. We have a problem with homelessness on every corner, yet we have hundreds and hundreds of rooms that are being left empty and vacant for a number of years. And that was Jeff Wynn reporting. Turning to Case 3 weather now, let's take a live look over Sacramento on this Saturday morning. Let's go right to Heather right now. We're seeing the cloud cover this morning, but what does that mean for today? Well, today's mainly a quiet day, Leticia. It's a good day to get ready for tomorrow. I know some of you waking up to a couple of showers. These are not going to hang around long. And if anything, this little cell here that's moving out of Lake County, it's starting to weaken just a little bit. No lightning being detected there. Just enough to kind of wet the roads down a little bit. Still a little bit of light snow being detected south of Highway 50 uh, on the radar there. Again, we do have chain control up for 80, 50 and 88. We do expect that will be lifted at some point today. And if you need to get up and over the hill, today is certainly a much better day to do it. Snow is going to start early on Sunday morning once it starts Sunday, Sunday night and even parts of Monday. It's really going to be tough to get your travel in there. But here's what it looks like over Sacramento sky a little bit brighter than it was just an hour ago and not just because the sun's a little higher in the sky. The clouds are actually starting to break up a bit. It's cool though. Temperatures are in the mid 40s. Seasonable chill for this time of the year and it will be seasonably mild this afternoon into the upper 50s tomorrow. Again, the weather alert day. We've got soaking rain that'll start before sunrise. Strong winds that'll pick up first in the San Joaquin Valley. Then through the afternoon that will spread into the Sacramento Valley, especially on on the east side of the valley and around Sacramento County. And of course, we also have the heavy snow to watch above 6,000 feet. Let's time everything out for you today. Again, a quiet day. Sky may look threatening at times. Clouds will thicken up later this afternoon into this evening. We're dry through midnight. 
but this is 530 tomorrow morning. Already a steady, even soaking rain in some areas. And yep, we've already got the heavy snow falling probably above 5000 feet in the morning, but that snow level is going to go up as we go through mid morning into the early afternoon. Notice the rain is steady through the valley and into the foothills all morning. It becomes a little bit more hit or miss into the afternoon, but it really takes until after six or so for things to really start to clear out of Sacramento and for valley spots to the south and west of Sacramento foothills. We'll still have the rain ongoing still have the snow on going into the Sierra as well. And remember, winds will really be picking up tomorrow afternoon for Sacramento and areas to the north. Wind is an all day threat for the San Joaquin Valley and the adjacent foothills to the south of Highway 50. Monday morning, 9 o'clock, there may be some areas of light rain around, but nothing near to the tune of what we're going to see on Sunday. Notice we do still have the snow on going in the Sierra. We will still have chain controls at this point if that holds together. So how much rain are we talking about? This will be a good soaker valley rains or valley spots picking up an inch and a half to up to two inches of rain and up into the foothills potentially two to three inches of rain north of 80 spots like Placerville and Sonora still in that one and a half to two inch range so manageable rainfall amounts there but certainly enough to cause some localized street flooding creeks may come up just a bit too but again we are not expecting river flooding so for the Sierra tomorrow, an alert day, not just for the heavy snow, but for the wind that's going to be blowing that snow around at the passes. We will have whiteout conditions at times, and if you absolutely do have to travel on Sunday or Sunday night, plan for the possibility of road closures over the passes in the valley. It's a rainy day all day. It's windy for the San Joaquin Valley all day. The wind really picks up in the afternoon for Sacramento and areas to the north. Fortunately, Sunday night, the wind backs off. We may still have some standing water into Monday. Monday's a showery day. Leticia, we think there's enough rain to possibly impact the Monday morning commute, but overall a quieter day. Next chance of rain comes up Thursday. OK, we just have to get through tomorrow. Pretty much. All right, could be tough. All right, 821 right now. Worlds colliding in the capital city, the event that's bringing comic fans to Sacramento.
comic book fans have a fun event this weekend. Inbound Comics is bringing Comic Verse back, and it will feature dozens of vendors, cosplayers, and some special guests. So we have five guests from a hit anime called Naruto. Yep. Um, there's also a few people from another show called Bleach. Uh, one is Tony Oliver. Another one is Katero Colbert. But they're just some very prominent characters on this show. Yeah. And uh, they're going to be there autographing for fans and just being a part of our event. The event is tomorrow at the Scottish Rite Center on H Street. It goes from noon to 5. You can get tickets at the door or online, comicverse.com. And if you're thinking about sprucing up your home, you can head right to Cal Expo. The Home and Landscape Expo is underway, and there's everything you could think of for home improvement projects. There are hundreds of exhibits with ideas to remodel or refresh any room or yard. It's inspiring to actually see things and feel them and touch them and see them up close is a really powerful tool. And that's why I tell people, come down, you'll see 800 different exhibits. Um, it's not just one or two things for the inside of the house, the outside of the house. They'll be open today and Sunday from 10 to 5. It's $10 to get in. Kids 12 and under are free. And despite the wet weather ahead, we have quite a few events happening in our region this weekend. If you want to pull the full list, just scan this QR code with your phone and it's going to take you right there. You can also access it on our website, KCRA.com. Meanwhile, a little bit of Hollywood is coming to Sacramento this morning. Livecopter 3 was flying over the region at the rail yards when we noticed multiple trucks and trailers parked alongside the street. They appear to be movie trailers and trucks and the area is blocked off and under 24 hour security. Warner Brothers has permits to film in Sacramento. The permits are for the downtown area, but the city has not released any details just yet. Time right now is a 26 striking back the response from the White House after the deaths of three U.S. service members.
where the news comes first. This is KCRA 3 Morning News. Ahead of the weather, PG&E is actually asking people to prepare for expected outages. I have where coming up. Voting underway in South Carolina as Democrats hold their first primary of the election season. The voting base President Biden has been trying to reach. An airstrikes in Iraq and Syria, the targeted areas by the U.S. And what's next? Another storm will bring more rain and snow to the region tomorrow, but this time we are expecting a bigger impact from the wind. That could have a big impact in the Sierra and low visibility is expected. Caltrans says they're working to keep the roads clear, but travel along the Sierra will be difficult, dangerous, and probably not advised. Let's get a check of our weather forecast with meteorologist Heather Waldman. Yeah, if you have to travel to the Sierra, today is definitely the best day of the weekend. We do still have chain controls up for 80, 50, and 88 as well. This is a live look, Highway 50 at Myers, so the top of the chain control there. We've had some cars going through the circle here. They're moving along just fine, but you can see there may be a little bit of slush on the roads. Radar indicating that things are really clearing up. There's still some cloud cover and temperatures cold enough that obviously there still could be a few slick spots. So today, some minor slowdowns with those chain controls. I do expect those will be lifted later this morning if some spots haven't already. Uh, tonight, again, low impact if you have to get up and over the Sierra. It'll be dry. There may be some icy spots, but Sunday morning, starting before sunrise, snow will already be falling. We will already have the chain controls up. That snow will pick up in intensity through the afternoon. And as you heard Leticia say, we'll have wind and that could create whiteout conditions at times up and over the passes. So Sunday, really not the day to travel. If you do have have to go up and over the passes. Make sure the car's got a full tank of gas. Make sure you got extra water and some snacks just in case we do see some highway closures because that is a possibility through tomorrow. Again, because of the low visibility, the high winds and of course the heavy snow. Wind, not just an issue for the Sierra. We'll be watching it through the San Joaquin Valley first thing tomorrow morning. Already gusting to 45 miles per hour in Modesto up to Ione as well. There will not be much wind very likely around Sacramento during the morning hours. Wait until the afternoon, though. That's when this is all going to start to shift to the north, and we will get a few hours with wind gusts between 40 and 50 miles per hour from Sacramento up to Marysville, Rockland, Folsom, the Granite Bay area, Placerville as well. All of these areas where we could see some scattered outages and some tree issues as well. So tomorrow really a day to be heads up when it comes to the weather and just take it easy and stay home if you can. Back to you. Heather, thank you so much. With the expected when utility companies in our region say they're monitoring for potential power outages. And KC3's Aaron Heft is live in El Dorado County this morning. And Aaron, what are people doing to get ready? People really have an eye on preparing themselves for these expected outages, whether it's going to be rain or wind or snow. People who live in the foothills where I stand and even into the Sierra, they really do already know how to prepare themselves and they are ahead of this system moving in tomorrow and into Monday. So KCRA, we went to Pollock Pines area and spoke to people at hardware stores and just generally to see how they're preparing themselves. And we saw people buying tarps and snow shovels, pallets and more. They're making sure they have everything they need ahead of tomorrow. PG&E actually telling us they're expecting some outages with the main areas of concern being the Sierra and Foothill communities, as well as parts of Sacramento and San Joaquin County. We're making sure we have plenty of crews available to meet the needs in case there are. If necessary, well, we will bring in crews from other areas to help local crews in the most impacted areas. That way we can get power back on more quickly. PG&E also going on to say that they're keeping a very close eye on the forecast, including today into tomorrow and obviously Monday, so they can best predict and prepare for those areas that are potentially going to be hardest hit. Leticia, back to you. Aaron, thank you so much. And Smud also says they'll be monitoring for potential power outages. The utility says they plan to have a plan in place in case the power goes out prepares year round for storms through maintaining equipment and also maintaining vegetation like trees and branches that are near infrastructure like power lines and power poles. Uh, we wanna make sure that as weather comes in, we wanna help prevent any type of storm related.